What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Not Today. I'm Jen Sturger. Hi, it's Eddie Pence. Oh, wow. Look at that. Look at that. Just took just took a five hour energy. So I'm good. <laughs> Did you really? Yeah. <laughs> Extra strength. Grape. You didn't bring enough for the whole class? No. Uh, you can have the residue. Gross. Trying to get sponsors. Yeah, we did have a five hour energy as a sponsor before. <laughs> we if, any, did. if anybody could find them, that'd be great. Um, how's everything going, Eddie? Things are going. Yeah. Things are going. Did you watch the fight this weekend? No. No? I was at my son's high school football game. Oh, you yeah. were doing something wholesome and yes. pure. And, and had I not been, and still wouldn't have watched that fight. Really? Because I did not give a shit. I feel, I feel like there's certain events, no matter how much you hate people, you still have to be involved. I knew like, like when the when the Astros are in the um, World Series, you still yeah. have to watch. Well, yeah, you want to see how they're cheating. Yeah. Sorry, Astro fans. Or or if they get beat, you know what I mean. Yeah. Like everybody, everybody. I'll still watch in. the Super Bowl no matter who's in it. Everybody, I'll still watch the World Series no matter. Yeah, who's everybody in it. tuned in to watch yes. the Yankees lose. You know what I mean. Um, but I knew it, that that fight. I knew exactly what was going to happen. Both of them are like, it doesn't behoove either one of us to get knocked out. No. So we're just going to go in and spar for eight rounds and then take our respective purses home. I knew exactly what it was going to be. Yeah. We I don't all, need to watch that bullshit. We were all going to get played, but we were all hoping that we would get to see a Paul brother knocked on it's like It wasn't going to happen. Or at least bit. That'd have been cool. Yeah. That'd have been cool. If he bit his penis off, I would have watched that. <laughs> I totally would have watched him get his penis bitten off. <laughs> that would have been worth it. Oh, just the tip. Just the tip. Just, <laughs> just spit it away. <laughs> no, I didn't give a shit about it. I didn't care. I really honestly did not care. When it was announced a year or whatever ago, I didn't care. And then yeah. when they pushed it because Mike Tyson had medical thing, like I didn't care. The minute you're like, Mike Tyson has medical stuff, you're like, oh, they're building in excuses for how he's not going to yeah, be I did, able I did, to I did, perform. He's 58. It was, it was impressive that a 58-year-old man yeah. could go eight rounds with a 27-year-old. Yeah. It's a physical feat. It's for impressive. Sure. Mm, but, I don't know. I feel like at some point, endurance becomes less of a factor and it's just more that old man strength it was just like just do you know what i mean we're just, just being, like you just need one you yeah. just need one hand to connect yeah i think we saw a better fight in uh in like their face off did you see that yeah, the least? slap was fun the slap was great that was better in the whole fight the slap was like oh the internet was like oh thank god he did what we all wanted to do <laughs> um but I, I can't be like, well, I'm not a fan of Tyson. He, he's a convicted rapist. Listen, uh, uh, like yes. I've done like I'm not like one was better than the other. They're both people I don't care for. Yeah, he's definitely done things. But listen, I, I agree. Alex actually mentioned this before the show. Like Tyson's at least had a little bit of like a renaissance. You know what I mean? I think it started with the, the hangover hang movies. Just because you right? put him in a comedy doesn't excuse the fact that he raped a human being and was convicted for it and went to jail for he it. He did a reverse O.J. Simpson. <sighs> and then Where beat, is the lie? He beat what's-her-face, his wife. Yeah. He, was, he physically assaulted a female. Yeah. I have certain lines you don't cross, and when you cross those, I'm like, I don't give a fuck You're about like, I'm you not a, I'm not a I'm fan. I'm not a fan of you Exactly. Anymore. I don't care how many movies you do with Zach Galifianakis. I don't care. I uh, I worked on this show on NBC Sports back in the day, and they did this bit because Mike Tyson had a show coming out at the time during the Mike Tyson sons <laughs> of where he was racing pigeons. Yeah. And so they sent one of our our co-workers, this comedian, Reese Waters, they sent him to go and interview Tyson. Yeah. But they did it over like tea and they called it tea with Tyson. And it is, if you can find this clip on the internet, it is the most unhinged thing you've ever watched because like, you can just see Reese is like, just like just nervous. Be like, don't say the wrong thing. Don't say the wrong thing. We don't know what version of Mike we're going to get. Cause like Mike would just say random crazy yeah. shit you know but yeah it was to advertise his uh his pigeon racing show or whatever because he raises pigeons i don't care i know i don't care I anything don't care. about him i know you don't care i don't ever i don't care if i ever see him again look when i was a kid and he was undefeated and had all the titles and mike tyson's punch out i was a fan yeah i watched every fight for every 30 second fight he fought but then you find out something about them that i found out he raped a human being yeah. and i'm like i'm done with you yeah there's nothing you can do to make up for that you're a piece of shit for the rest of my life. I feel like a lot of people who are 
it's mostly athletes. It's mostly athletes and anybody that reaches that like godlike status or that legend well, status. Yeah. And you know I mean? this country especially loves someone who gets to that status, falls because of course we as soon as someone gets up there, we want to tear them down. Yeah. And then we want to see them come back. Yes. Every time with everybody. Yeah. I mean, we're still waiting for Britney Spears. <laughs> we are. No one rooted harder for Britney. Yeah. Than every woman that watched her growing up yeah. and you know came up with her and then she you had know? the fall then she had the fall and then they in all wandered out of the conservatorship and then she got out and we're like oh that was probably a good idea oh that's what that was for yeah yeah <laughs> yeah um yeah she's i think she's a different thing altogether just yeah. because i feel like she's one of those people that fame ruined her fame yeah. and crazy abusive family dynamics yeah ruined for sure her mental health and like made her into something that she's not but that's you know that's I mean? a common tale with most children that grow up in show business yeah i mean not just children listen like i think girls that came up during my era like in the early 2000s if you made it out alive and you haven't shaved your head gotten a face yeah. tattoo killed yourself or ended up in jail like you're doing pretty good yeah you know if you haven't ended up in rehab you're doing well, great if you're in a teenager or even your early 20s and you get that kind that level of fame yeah it warps your sense of reality and it's hard to, once that fame goes, because fame is fleeting for most. It does. It comes and it goes. You don't know how to recover. It comes and it goes, you know, because I've had that weird, I don't even know if you can call it fame. I've had that weird thing where I still get a lot of attention in headlines. Yeah. But it's usually because people are just like, mm, what What can we punch her in the face for now? Right. It comes you know, up because people want to like take a shot. Like something happens with what's his face comes up in the news or whatever. And people want to take a shot at you. But it's crazy that like my life will forever be linked to someone who made a really bad decision yeah. and continues to make bad decisions. Yes. And people still make excuses for him. Yes. Because he's an athlete. Although, but I do feel like he's getting ratioed more and more often. I think people are realizing more. There's a large segment of the population that's more like they're as opposed to when your incident happened back in what 29 2009 or 2010 or whatever yeah, it was yeah it came out in 2010 he was so. still like america's darling he, he was, was the still, nfl's darling he was america's darling but also the world was just not ready to hear that their heroes might not no. be who they thought they were right and now i think over the last 10 15 years people are starting to go like you know what these are these are flawed human beings that have been, that we put up on pedestals oh yeah and now we can look at them for who they really are i think uh wrestlers are really are really a testament to this yeah. stuff you know what i mean like i'm like have you ever been a fan of somebody and then i was like of course you've been a fan of somebody and then you find out something about them and you're like oh yeah like look at hogan like every kid loved hogan yeah loved hogan and then you realize hogan doesn't love every kid you're like hogan doesn't love you have to be a certain color for hogan to love you it's just like you realize he's not He's just another flawed human being that you've put on that the the character that was created and pushed out in front of everybody is not the real person. Same with Ric Flair. And same with Ric I Flair. Mean, same mm, with all of same with all mm, of them. Ric Flair. I feel like Ric Flair He was, lived the gimmick. He lived for the sure. Gimmick. Lived yeah, the he gimmick. got he got what they call lost in the sauce. Yes. He yeah. was that. From yeah. everything I've seen. For sure. If you've seen Dark Side of the Ring, yeah. like that's exactly Every what Every documentary it was. I've seen on Flair, it seems like he just he that was the gimmick and he fell into it and lived it. And yet they still get opportunities because it's, a, <laughs> I feel we like we want to give them second, third, fourth, fifth mm, chances. But I also feel like, I feel like there's a section of the, of the population. That's just like, you have to do, I have to walk past a certain line before I'm like, okay, I won't support you anymore. Yeah. I don't know what that line is. Mine's rape. Yeah, I mean, that's what most people <laughs> is, is. You know Mike what I mean? Tyson. That's, Mine what, is that's what most people yeah. is, yeah. you know? Um, the Like, I think, I think OJ was like our first example of, of something that was like that publicly covered where there was someone that was like truly beloved. Yes. You know what I mean? Because he was so... Not just in sports, but in entertainment. In entertainment, especially because of the Naked Gun movies. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like they showed he was just super affable and like, you know... People loved him. Fun dude. And then you realize later on, like even outside of the the murder thing, like <laughs> people like you hear stories about how he was as a person. You're like, oh, he wasn't yeah. a good person. I still think of all the, like, the bit Dave Chappelle has about it. And he's like, that guy did it. <laughs> <laughs> We all know he did it. Even the people that were adamant that he didn't do it were still like, yeah, he probably did. Like, it's just, yeah. it was so, everything pointed to him doing it. Yeah. 
we man we failed we failed that one we but really we, we, we failed really everything bungled, we really bungled that yes oh uh, but yeah the fight i didn't even i didn't even watch it i just saw clips of it i heard it was impossible to watch everybody well, was talking broke about netflix it was like 65 million That's streams insane. yeah it was insane it broke the record for any sort of live combat sport that's insane. Yeah. Because. Well, you literally have two. You have Generation X kids that grew up with Mike Tyson. Yeah. And then you have all these Logan Paul fans. They're, you know, millennials and Gen Zers. And there was like, you're Let's literally combining real. three generations. Mm, Let's one. be real. Gen X is the one that probably broke it because they couldn't remember their password. That's probably it. <laughs> They're trying to start their free trial. <laughs> like my dad still doesn't have Netflix, which is insane. That is crazy. Like what is. What do you watch? What do you you watch ABC? What are you doing? I don't know. <laughs> I think the man still has cable. That's hilarious. But yeah, doesn't have any streaming Cut platforms. Cut the cord, Sturger. He doesn't have any streaming platforms. But yeah, I didn't. Uh, I didn't watch it. I just watched the clips on the internet, and I feel like I saw everything I needed to you see. You probably did. I missed all you the pageantry. Did. I missed Mike Tyson's bare ass. Apparently, yeah, that was seemed to be the clip of the the whole thing. Came that's, down to seeing his bare ass. Just, that's just put that on things I don't yeah. want to see. You could just take a picture of his bare ass and saved us all the trouble of the whole fight. Yeah. I haven't seen that much bare ass since like Rikishi. <laughs> <laughs> it was a Rikishi-esque ass. It was, right? Yeah. Oh, anyways, that's that's where we're at, guys. That's So, yeah, you just can't. There's no heroes. You just have to realize these are all flawed people yeah. that we put on pedestals and just enjoy the character that they perform as, but don't believe them as the human being they are. Oh, speaking of flawed people. No, I'm joking. I don't even know a segue for this. <laughs> um, I was looking at looking at stuff to like buy people for the holidays. Yeah. And I was like, I I like to give people in my life like clothes. Like I like to elevate their look if I can. Like, yeah. I don't know. I don't, maybe that's weird. I don't know. But I do like buying clothes for people because I feel like I have really good taste sure. in what other people might like. Sure. Maybe I'm insane for thinking that. I don't that. know. But there's just some weird shit going on out there when it comes to clothing right now. Really? Yeah. I'm not really a fashion person. So. No. You don't say. I'm what not. are you fucking wearing? What is that? Oh, it's a pelican. I'm aware, but what is that? Myrtle Beach Pelicans. It's a triple A baseball team. Oh. For Myrtle Beach. You really gonna wear that in here? I it's a I had the shirt before I knew you. Mm-hmm. So it's just a it shirt. It looks pretty new, Eddie. It's an old shirt. It looks pretty it's new, Eddie. It's not that new. Mm-hmm. My dad worked for the Pelicans. He did? Yeah. What do you do? Like parking. Oh. Yeah. It was a retirement job. Like an usher? Yeah. He was an usher. Oh, I love that. It's like an old man job. I love that. Yeah. I like like when we go to the Rays, uh, Rays games, like all of the retirees are like working the top. It's like, if you have the choice between that or Walmart, yeah. you fucking work at a sporting event. Yeah. It's way more fun. So much more fun. He's just sitting around his golf cart, drive around the parking lot. Oh, by the way, did you see the Rays are, uh, they're going to be playing at Steinbrenner this year? Yeah, because the the drop the Tropicana got destroyed, right? <laughs> we all saw that field. coming, right? We all saw that coming. I can't believe it took this long. I uh, truly same. Yeah, because I didn't think it was that crazy of a storm, and then I watched back some of the clips my parents sent me, and I'm like, no, those are that was pretty rough yeah. wind, especially because the trop is actually way closer to the water than my parents are. Oh, is it? Yeah, they were gonna they were always gonna get whipped around, yeah, but yeah. like seeing the actual ceiling of the trop. Yeah. Yeah. Like just gone flailing in the wind. That's crazy. Yeah. So they're going to play at Steinbrenner. I think that's going to be a very rude awakening for people in Tampa that have not had to watch summer sports. Yeah. Outdoors. Oh. <laughs> oh. What's peak temperature in summer? Not not counting the humidity. What's just peak temperature? Does it get to like 110? Is it like that hot no, down there? No, it never gets that hot. It's like hot. 95 it's like 90, with 100% humidity. 90, 94 to 98 with 100% humidity. Which feels like 120. It's just, you're sweaty before you're sweaty. Yeah. Do you you know walk outside I mean? and your shirt sticks to you. moist. Yeah, yeah. Ugh. Like that's just the weather report. Yeah. Moist. Give me 90, give me 115 in Arizona. Oh, yeah. Dry as opposed to 95 in Florida. Those are two very different things. Very different. For heats. sure. And I would take the Arizona I, every so single I. day. Um, so, yeah, they're going to be playing at Steinbrenner Field, um, which is interesting. And I I hope it makes them realize that the new stadium, because they're not going to re repair the old one, right? I would imagine. Well, how much money are you going to sink into that stadium? You it's, can't. You can't put like, money into is, that stadium. That stadium feels like. Like an you know old what, Costco, like, like an empty Costco. No, like a car, like a car. Oh no, it does feel like an empty Costco for sure. I'm just trying to think of an analogy. And I'm oh. like, it feels like, you know, when you're 
a lot of shit starts going on your car yeah. and you're like, is it time to get a new car yeah. or do I keep fixing it? Am this I just thing? throwing good money after bad or do I just get a new car? Do I just get a new one? Yeah. Yeah. You can't do that with the trop. The trop is done. Yeah. Just implode the thing. Man, so many memories there. Though. <laughs> so many memories. But, um, but yeah, so anyways, uh, when I'm looking at all these like clothes and stuff and like all the different styles that are coming out yeah. right now, there's, there are these things that there are these pea stained looking jeans is the best way I can explain pea it. Pea stained jeans? Yeah. You can buy pea stained jeans? They look like. You know, they there's look like, like speckles around the crotch. It looks like when like you're like, mm, that needed an extra shake. <laughs> That's what they look like. Why would you pay for that? I don't know. I can I, do that for free. I'm sure you do. I'm pretty sure. At my you age, for sure. <laughs> you think you're done peeing and then you put it away. And you're like, oh, still going. But like, they're not cheap either. They're not cheap. I came in the... They're $815. What the fuck? Get the fuck out of here. And look, this is what they look like. It's not like speckles. This is literally it's like... like you spilt your... Fu that's like you fucking pissed yourself. This that's is, not pee speckles. This is Fergie, I forgot to go to the bathroom, <laughs> concert level pee. <laughs> that's crazy. $800? They were on the... Run like, yeah, runway in Milan And they're called pee stained week. jeans? Is it, that what they're going someone for? Someone said you ain't cool unless you pee your pants. Oh my god! I, hate I don't. I hate it here. I don't understand this. This feels right up there with. My jeans are worth like two thousand dollars. With men's bell bottoms, you know what I mean? Like we don't need to do this. Like when when do you remember when boot cut jeans were in for dudes? Yeah, I had a pair. Yeah, a pair. Well, a couple pairs. That was most, all my jeans were bootcut jeans. Where they're like super tight. They weren't super tight here. Were it, wasn't like, it wasn't like bell bottoms where it's like super, super tight and then they flare out. They were just sort of like normal and then they flared out. We've done some insane shit with yeah. fashion. Yeah. Well, then we went super skinny jeans, which were ridiculous. Yeah. Now it's just like, these are just like, like straight slim fit. I feel like you've, you've never, you never adopted the skinny jeans. No. You've just always been like, these because are your balls jeans. can't breathe. <laughs> you fucking, your balls are pressed up against you. They're doing like this other thing where they have like built in underwear in the waistline. So it looks like you're like housing. Do you remember, do you know what that is? No. Housing? You never called it that? No. When you show your underwear above That's your pants? That's called housing? Yeah. Like, I mean, it was back in the day. I just assume everyone thinks you have underwear on. Why do you have to show it off? Yeah. This was like when dudes would let their underwear peek out above their pants, like intentionally. No, I never did that intentionally. Like I did it as a girl, <laughs> but I did it with like thongs. Like Lita. Well, girls thought it was fucking hot. You yeah, saw, like you saw, Lita. You saw a thong and a girl like above her waistline. You're like, okay. Or Trish Stratus. Yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't be like a dude. Let me see your boxer sticking out. <laughs> Who the fuck thinks that's what hot? are those Hanes? No, me undies. <laughs> Sponsor us, please. Fucking through the looms. But yeah, I never did just, that. There's on just on purpose. I didn't do that. I'll never understand some of the men's fashion things that have happened though, and I'm sure you feel the same way about women's stuff. But I well, women's to... always is changing. Guys, it takes a little. It's, it's. I feel like guys are less susceptible to fast fashion. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like you guys are. It's pretty run of the mill. Yeah. Where it's just like they might change a little bit here and there. Yeah, like but it's I still... had I had boot cut jeans for a few, like that was in for like five or six years in like the mid two thousands to like the you know two thousand twelve or whatever, and then like the slim skinny jeans took over, and then I've just been in the slim fit for the last 10, 15 years. Yeah, like I don't really as long as they're jeans and they don't like scream some sort of fashion statement. Do you ever wear any like white jeans or like light colored jeans? I don't wear white. Neither do I. In anything. I think it's really bold when I see somebody wearing an all white outfit. Oh, that's a choice. Where you're just like, Good for oh, you, you, you want to have absolutely no fun. Yeah, you just, <laughs> you don't want anyone near you. You can't eat. You can't go to the bathroom. I. You don't want to sit down. I thought I was mature enough to wear white uh, in 2006. Yeah. I bought a white, really sick, like, women's pantsuit with like a, <sighs> like a crop like top situation oh, underneath wow. it. Okay. It yeah, was yeah. very 2000. Don't judge me. It was 2006. It was for the Maxim Hot 100 party. Okay. okay. Well, yeah, that's different. That's a party. But yeah, there was like some snakeskin elements to it, but it was mostly, it was all white besides that. How long that last? Eddie, when I tell you, I rolled back into my apartment, not my apartment, my, uh, my right. hotel 
at like 4 a.m. Like a Pollock painting. To catch a 7 a.m. flight out of JFK. Yeah. Like this suit was destroyed. Like there was no coming back. <laughs> My ass was black. Like there was just shit all you over. You can't it. wear a white suit into no. a party. I wore it into the party and thank God I got pictures in it. But like that suit was never the same yeah. ever again. Yeah, yeah. I don't even wear white t-shirts. My dad was like, what happened to you? Because he was traveling with me that day. He was like, what happened to you? He's like, it looks like you laid down in traffic and let cars run you over. <laughs> That's what it looks like. Where I was just like, come sweet death. You know? <laughs> just, just kill me. Um, just kill me. No, I dated this one guy though. And he loved buying white stuff. But the problem was he was like the messiest person you've yeah, ever you can't met wear white no i try to cover up i'm he filthy wasn't dirty he was messy yeah i'm messy i'm the you know same I mean? way i'm not a dirty person i'm a messy person yeah we're like i was like you love things with sauce yeah. you smoke weed all day long like this 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 isn't gonna stay yeah. white no this is gonna be off white almost immediately I had, I had i had a pair of pants on the other day and i was i was recording my other podcast and i looked down and there was a huge chunk of chocolate <laughs> <laughs> right above my sh like on Are my sure on the cup my no i well i tested it Gross. i put my finger in and smelt it <laughs> i had to know <laughs> it was chocolate that's always a fun game yeah you have to play that when you have animals or kids kids chocolate or poop. chocolate or poop so i had this big hunk of chocolate on the cuff of my pants on the cuff of my jeans I'm like what the fuck is that? i first thought it was shit and i'm like of course okay i i, I didn't i hope i didn't shit on myself and then i <laughs> I, I love that you were like did I shit myself? Well, you have to wonder because like no one else shat on me. <laughs> so I, I, I was like, oh, that's chocolate. And I'm like, when did I have chocolate that would have dripped onto my cup? And I was like, oh, three days ago at the mall, Eddie. I had a, I had a Sunday at Dairy Queen. Eddie. And I was walking through the mall and I, I remember like some of it dripping. I thought it just hit the floor and I guess it hit the cuff of my pants. Because you wear jeans like seven days in a row. Of course. Yeah. Um, I didn't even wear white to my wedding. <laughs> what was your wedding dress? Like it Manila? Was it was like, it was like a neutral, neutral with like an ivory thing over it. Oh yeah, I guess it was kind of ivoryish. It was very, it yeah, was yeah. yeah, it was more neutral with like ivory. But over that fit it. the whole aesthetic of your wedding. White would have yeah. been too. It would have popped out too much. I'm, but I'm also, I'm just, I just don't wear white, dude. Yeah, white's terrible. I can't wear white. White's I awful. don't trust myself. Yeah, that pantsuit is forever etched in my memory. Where I'm like, <laughs> we're just not. I'm not mature enough to wear white. No, that's why I know I can't get married again. I'm like, I'm not mature no. enough to wear white yet. <laughs> Plus, I think the jig is up. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Like, white is supposed to be like purity. You're like, no, no I'm just. On. Everybody knows. Yeah. Everybody knows what's up. Um, but yeah. These pea stained jeans. They That's remind ridiculous. Me, they remind me of this pair of jeans that I have. And I always make an excuse when I ever have like that. I'm like, oh, I was washing my hands and I yeah. spilled. Like the other night I came in from the bathroom. I was brushing my teeth and I came in and I was just in my boxers. And Tracy's like, oh, you got pee on your pants. And I looked down. There's like two dribbles. And I'm like, oh, I'm not going to admit. Is, this was not dribbles, though, Eddie. You saw this. You saw that was pictures. full on just pissed your pants, evacuating your ba your bladder into your pants. I have a pair of ripped jeans that I've had since college. But you remember when Abercrombie came out with the super destroyed denim? Yeah. Where like you paid someone to rip up your pants. Yes. Yeah. I have those, but they have not fared well. Well, yeah. Like, because once you destroy it a little bit, it goes. The distressing gets worse and worse. Well, anyone and worse. knows who's ever had a hole in their jeans, it gets bigger. It gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. I've had these jeans since college, Eddie. I still keep them for photo shoots when I say the back pockets of them are so ripped up, I might as well be wearing a denim G string. <laughs> like, both Does your of ass my hang out of it. Both of my butt cheeks. <laughs> are like out of these like they are strictly for photos only they cannot be worn in public yeah they're obscene <laughs> i wore them to the pier one time in uh in santa monica to take pictures yeah. and like even just knowing i was going to take photos in them i was like i shouldn't be wearing these around children. Yeah, kids are going to look and <laughs> parents got to have talks with their children i want those oh my i feel God. funny oh did you see this thing um I was thinking about some stuff lately about like whether or not what makes a good partner. Yeah. And one of my friends brought something up. They're like, would you go on a game show with that person? Like, are they competent enough that you would enter a competition them with them? In a competition. Yes. In a competition like setting. 
It would. It were would, they were they were your phone a friend or? It would depend on what the game amazing, show is. Amazing race. What's the topics in the game show? Amazing race. Well, like a physical challenge, probably not. You wouldn't. You wouldn't. Not you with Tracy. Think, really? Not with a physical challenge. Why? She hikes. She's physical. Mm, mm. <laughs> Sorry, Tracy. I don't. In a physical challenge. I don't. No. There was like no no. If it now it depends if it's. So there's so there's actually like a thing called the wife carrying championship. Right. Where you have to carry your wife. You do that. How far? <laughs> How far do I have to carry her? I don't know. I can carry for a little bit. I'm 50. I got a bad back and achy knees. It can't be, it can't be like 300 yards. So let's see. More than 30 couples competed in a wife carrying championship. It's a 278 yard. Oh, so it is almost 300 yards. Race. They splash through water, leap over logs, and trudge through leap the Leap over logs? All while carrying their partner like a sack of potatoes. <laughs> I, I just imagine you putting Tracy like a baby Bjorn and just being like, hang on, honey. No. And she complained the whole time. Eddie, we're getting wet. Eddie? Out of my stomach. You're doing it wrong. <laughs> Eddie, it, you're getting dirty. We're getting no, dirty. No, did you piss yourself? Now, Tracy, like in high school, was like 95 pounds. Yeah. So, yeah, I could have done that then. Um, It's so funny. But now at my age, no. Yeah. The champion leaves the weight, uh, leaves with the weight of the wife in beer. I don't care. So you're not interested. I don't give a fuck. And five a times the wife's weight in cash. Now that's okay. <laughs> I'll do it for that. <laughs> it's still not that much money. It's still not that much money, but oh my still God. cash. People do this. Like I, I would I'm trying to think if I would be if it depends on what the game show is, if I would have her as my partner. Cause he, there's certain like if it's like if it's like sci-fi nerd stuff, no. I wouldn't phone her to like what issue did Spider make? Like I couldn't. Yeah. That would be a waste. Hmm. It's dodgy, right? No, I couldn't do it. Now, if it's like, okay, like... Uh, <laughs> it's competition dependent. Okay. If yeah. it's how much money can you save using coupons at the grocery store, then yes, I would have her as my partner because she's phenomenal at that. I I think about this. I actually think about this a lot where I'm like, mm, can I take this person on like the amazing race or would they slow me down? Hmm. Like, are you a good traveler is like a big indicator right. for me. Not necessarily like a competition thing, but right. like I'm a competitive person in general. Now, I've never watched The Amazing Race. Yeah. So, so like how, they travel all around the world. So you're not globe. just racing. You're no, traveling. You're traveling. Is there there's challenges? Like, yeah, there's challenges. There's logistics. You know what I mean? Like same kind of thing with Survivor. You know what I mean? Okay. I don't ever watch Survivor either. Oh, like I would have been. I actually, fun fact. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if I ever talked about it on the show. I was like slated to be on Survivor. Oh, really? Yeah. And they sent me like the requirements and like a big like write up about what it would take to be on Survivor. And I read through it and I was like, oh, these people are for real. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, this is like actual surviving. Yes. <laughs> yes. They're not fucking around. There's no beds. No. There's no beds. I was like, mm, this is outside. There's ex no, but it was not just that. It was just like the grueling toll that it takes on your body, especially with food. Mm. I was like, I can't. How long are you out there for? Minimum. I think it was like six weeks. So minimum you're there six weeks. I think it was six weeks, if I'm not mistaken. If you make it all the way. If you no, make no, it all no. the way. So not, minimum it's not six minimum, weeks. Minimum it's probably a couple of days. Right. I would have lasted a couple of days. You would have just fucking, I'm going to put out my own fucking torch. Exactly. The tribe, oh, I got this I'm tribe. Out. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> See you guys later. I'll just, yeah. I'm going to vote for myself. <laughs> I'd like to go the fuck home. I'm out of here. Fuck this. But yeah, I remember reading it and I was just like, these people are insane. Hmm. There's absolutely no way I would do this. Yeah. Oh my God. There's no guarantee I get paid. Plus the idea of being on screen. With there's no, no guarantee you get paid. No. On screen with no makeup. You don't get a minimum no amount hair. of money. No. For just doing the show. No. Fuck that. For publicity. Exposure. <sighs> yeah. No. I got offered to do that. I got offered to be on The Bachelor. And I got offered um, another type of game show like in early 2014 or 15 where I was going to be like the bachelorette. Mm -hmm. But one of the dudes in the house was my gay best friend. 
and he was like a mole. Okay. And so it was like your fairy. It was like, I forget what it's called, like your fairy godfather or something like that. Like, <laughs> oh but it was God. basically like, um, like they would report back and tell you all the stuff that guys were saying about you. Oh, so they were like your like spy. Yeah, they were a mole. And then they would come back yeah. and give the you the, the dish was, everything. The problem was when I went through this process, they were like, yeah, we want to meet your gay best friend. And I was like, I'll be right back. I was, no, 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 no. <laughs> I got to go find No, her. no, no. Whoa, whoa, I mean, whoa. I have gay best friends. Right. Uh, the problem with my gay best friends is yeah. they're not fooling anyone. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, can you turn it down to like an eight? Maybe. <laughs> like, I can just imagine them coming into the house with like, what's up, guys? I'm drinking this IPA, <laughs> this IPA beer. And um, yeah, something, something. Definitely don't want to talk about Wicked. Like, let's talk. Football, let's Tom talk Brady. Sports, guys. Let's talk the sports. Yeah, that's exactly what my gay would have been like. So <laughs> How about had, that Michael Jordan, everyone? So I had to I had to outsource it to like my second gay best friend. Right. Because I was like, at least this one will pass. Right. This one can because he's an actor. Yeah, yeah. And so he He can play straight. He can play straight. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. He's very Neil Patrick Harris. Okay. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, my my OG gay, there was no way. There's no way. There was no way he was going to get past the sniff right. test with Deuce. He was gonna, he was gonna get in the house, talk way too much about Kristen Chenoweth, <laughs> like it was just like he was gonna have posters of Cher uh. and the Golden Girls all over his corner of the room. It was just not gonna work. So yeah, but I turned it down because I um I I thought I'd met somebody that I wanted to be with, and yes. I was like, I'm so dumb. I'm so dumb because like this could have been a really fun opportunity. Yes. Um, the show ended up not going anyway, just because E really wanted something at the time that was going to be able to be done multiple times. And very much like that show average Joe, right? It's hard it's to a one fool, and done sort of it's thing. It's hard to fool people more than once. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? I forget what the other show was where they were basically like, you're dating a prince. You oh yeah, I mean? yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. But it's, it's very hard to fool people more than once with that type yeah. of premise, you know? So anyways, sure. I could have been somebody. You could have been somebody. Like, at least on a reality show. <laughs> anyways, Eddie, is it time? Oh, it's that time. It's that time again. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We're going to play Florida Man Friday. I read Jen Sturger's three Florida Man headlines, two real, one fake. Just tell me what is the fake Florida Man headline. And as of now, the score is... 12 gin, 12 to 10 gin. Okay. Combined Alex and Mark at 10 wins. I still blame Mark for my deficit. <laughs> you could have been a 500, I man. I could have been yeah. there. I could have been, been there. been a 500. So Jen's got 12 wins. Whoa, Mark Jen, and Alex, the look, studio. Jen looks locked in. I am. She I'm is. ready to go. She is. All right, here we go. Florida man dubbed pooping perpetrator sought <laughs> by police for break-in. Florida man wanted for drugs who identifies himself as master of deception was caught wearing a wig in attempt to avoid police. Florida man brings emotional support iguana to court, cause it his therapiguana. <laughs> I think three is fake. You think three Dang, is the fake one? She went so quick on that. I hate the, okay, the first one's good, yeah. but there's too many alliterations. I'm calling it a fake. The pooping penetrator? Yeah. Uh, I'm going, I'm going with their iguana too. Oh, okay. You're a winner. And both of you tied. Woo! Yeah. It is the therap iguana. Yeah. Okay. Is the fake Florida therap man. Therap was getting, too far, Eddie. I'm very good. I'm getting good at this. So the bridge too far? Therap I thought I could fool you with pooping pen penetrator. Or perpetrator. Ah, there I, see. <laughs> I thought poopy, pooping perpetrator. That is a different kind of <laughs> game, Eddie. <laughs> That's not chocolate on my pants. That one you can definitely go to jail for. That's not chocolate on my pants. Uh, yeah, no. The Therapiguana. Therapiguana was too much. I, yeah. As I was writing, I was like, is this too much? Therapiguana. Therapiguana. It's too much. It is too much. Well, Plus, I tried. like, you can't hug an iguana. You can't. You can't. Eddie, where can people find you? Uh, at Eddie Pence on all the socials or EddiePence.com. At Jennifer Sturger, guys, on all the socials. I'm still trying to figure out Big Sky, but please find us over there. Blue Sky, Big Sky, whatever. Blue I don't Sky. Know. Big Blue Sky's Sky. in Montana. Yeah, that's right. Blue Sky. Please go over. I don't even know what the name of the app is. Doesn't find me matter. anywhere but Twitter is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> um, I mean, I'm still on Twitter just because I don't. I took it off my phone. 
I'll take it off. My I still have my account, but I took it yeah, off my phone. I just have to hold my account because I don't want to. I don't want anybody else to take it. No, I get it. And pose as me. I get it. Because I feel like that would get, that'd be a real slippery slope. Yes. Um, but anyways, you can find me guys at Jennifer Sturger on all the socials. Um, uh, JenSturger.com is going to have my comedy dates and other stuff on it. Um, and really just please, if you see links coming up in my stories to put your cities in that you'd like to see Eddie and I tour, put those in there. Do it. Yes. Because we would like to get this going. We'd like to come see you guys. We'd like to come meet you guys. Um, and send us any topics you guys want to talk about. Yeah. Any questions you have? Anything? If you like have that, questions, if you need life advice, clearly we're too balanced. We've individuals. nailed life. So <laughs> we're just willing to pass on all this knowledge. <laughs> and continue to like and subscribe and share us with your friends. You guys are doing such an amazing job. Um, we love hearing from you guys, especially when stuff really resonates for you with the mental health stuff. Um, we just feel like this show's really kind of been the most transparent and real version of us. I think so. You know what it I mean? It feels like it anyway. For sure. Stupid, irrelevant shit like therapy iguanas, but like also <laughs> therapy, uh, low, low cost therapy. Exactly. A little event session for 40 minutes every week. Exactly. So thank you so much. Five star review, positive review. Share us with your friends. Let's keep this magic going, guys. Until next time, we'll see you on another episode of Not Today.